Here's how to make Christmas tree brownies. Cook your brownie in a cake tin, then cut it into eighths. Pipe on green buttercream icing in a zigzag shape, followed by some Christmas sprinkles, some gold stars, and something cute to put at the top. And that's it. Let me know if you want the brownie recipe. What's up, guys? Today we're going to be making Rice Krispie reindeers. Add butter and marshmallows to a pan and stir until melted. Then pour in your Rice Krispies and mix until fully coated. Spoon the mix into a baking tray, pressing down with a wet glass. Let them set in the fridge, then cut into 12 rectangles. Add a red M&M for the nut two edible eyes and draw on some antlers with a chocolate writing pen. Let them set in the fridge and that's it. Enjoy! You need to be making your own cranberry sauce for this year's Christmas dinner. So I'm going to show you a nice quick recipe to get that on the table ready for you. First of all, we're going to need some fresh cranberries. Then we're going to have to make eight caramels. So it's a dry caramel with just sugar and spices. Leave that to do its thing, slice your apples in that time. Once it's a beautiful dark caramel, add in your cranberries. They're going to start bursting, releasing all that flavour and juice, but still keeping some texture. Now we need to deglaze the pan. I'm using vodka and orange juice because it's absolutely delicious. Delicious. Once those cranberries have started to come together and make a bit of like a squishiness, add in your apple and then cook it out for about 10 to 15 minutes until you've got this beautiful crimson sauce. Here's how to make my harissa maple glazed ham. Into a pot, you're going to add some carrot, onion and celery, then it's time for some aromatics. I've got some fresh rosemary, some black peppercorns and a couple of bay leaves. Pop the ham into the pot, then add just enough cold water to cover. Bring this up to a simmer and cook for around an hour. Once cooked, remove the skin, then use a sharp knife to score the fat in a diamond pattern. Grab a handful of cloves, then pop one in where the cuts meet. Now for the glaze, add some harissa, maple syrup and oil into a bowl, and then brush this all over the ham. Stick it into a nice hot oven for 30 minutes. Look at this beautiful ham. Merry Christmas. Hey guys, it's Saren. Today I'll be making filo cigar mince pies. I've got some mince meat, some melted butter, and of course, filo pastry. I've got lots of sheets of those. As you can see, I have put some melted butter onto my filo pastry, and I'm gonna repeat this process four more times. I've just cut my filo pastry into six squares. Don't overfill it because you don't want it all to fall out. Ready to go into the oven. Don't they look all snowy and Christmassy? All done so let's make some pimped up pigs and blankets so obviously for a traditional one just wrap up a sausage in bacon if you want to go level up get some sage leaves and wrap those up as well it goes really well with the pork now if you want to go even further get some cheese and caramelized onions which i made from sweating down onions in butter and then adding some balsamic vinegar and then carefully wrapping them up i also made one which was a mixture of honey and whole grain mustard but you can get creative try a few different combinations and see what you like best and whack them in the oven until they're fully cooked and the bacon's nice and crispy on the outside serve them up nicely give them a taste the cheese and caramelized onion ones were my favorite i definitely recommend giving them a go i've got three beautiful pieces of salmon fillets here and i'm going to give you three different marinades and flavorings that you can use for your salmon at home place each salmon fillet in the middle of each parcel for salmon fillet number one i'm using lemon juice i've sliced up some garlic and a sprinkle of chili flakes for salmon fillet number two i'm using soy sauce and some ginger and then fillet number three I'm adding a drizzle of olive oil, some dill and lots of crushed black pepper. After marinating each one just make sure that you're rubbing it all into the salmon. So I'm going to wrap each one up and pop them in the oven for about 10-15 minutes. Guys, and once you've taken them out of the oven, you've got three beautiful pieces of salmon. So we've got ginger and soy sauce, olive oil, dill and crushed black pepper and chili flakes, garlic and lemon juice. What's up guys? Today we're going to be making Christmas pudding protein truffles. Add almond butter and honey to a bowl and mix these together. Then add instant oats, whey protein and cocoa powder and mix these together with your hands. Grab about a tablespoon of the mix and roll it into a ball and top with melted white chocolate and let it drip down the edges. Then add a red sprinkle and two little leaves for decoration and refrigerate for 30 minutes. And that's it, enjoy! Our top meat-free options to make your Christmas dinner more sustainable. We're starting off with the Beef Free Wellington, helping cut the 23.5 kilos of CO2 produced by a turkey dinner. Next on the list is melting middle onions. With up to 50% of food at Christmas imported, this is the perfect item to help inspire you to shop locally. But top of the list has to be vegan pigs in blankets. If 85% of the UK population went vegan at Christmas, it would help save 131 million tonnes of CO2. Follow us for more eco tips and let us know what sustainable option you'll be having for Christmas dinner. 
Today we're going to be making a Boxing Day wrap, so you want to start off by putting some oil into a dish and putting it into a 200 degree oven. While that's heating, you want to measure out 230 grams of plain flour, 3 eggs, a teaspoon of baking powder, some salt and pepper, and then gradually stir in 300 milliliters of milk. You want to do this really gradually so that you get a nice smooth batter. Once you've done that, you want to add it to the dish containing the hot oil, making sure to pour around the edges so you get a rise like a Yorkshire pudding. Put this in the oven for half an hour and it should come out nice and golden. You then want to get your leftovers and then cut the Yorkshire in half. Top this with the bits from the dinner, which is turkey, roast potatoes, pigs in blankets, some stuffing and some gravy. I then wrapped that up and secured it with a wooden stick and then enjoy. You may be having your roast potatoes at Christmas dinner, but it's 2020. Who says you can't have two potato dishes? What about a lovely, warm, lovely spiced Christmas dough from Wars? Now you want to use these spices. You've got star anise, cloves, allspice and cinnamon. Get that into cream with garlic. Now peel and slice your potatoes nice and thin. Add your potatoes into the cream mixture once it's thickened. Remember to take them spices out because they're going to be a crunchy surprise for somebody. Then you layer it up, a little bit of salt in between each layer and your lovely cream. Then sage on top is going to get lovely and crispy and just infuse the rest of that cream as well. A bit of brie on there. Now you want to foil it up. Get that into the oven at 160 degrees Celsius for half an hour. Then remove the foil and leave to cook for another half an hour. And you have this gorgeous baked, crispy, crunchy layer little hug of Dauphinoise potatoes. If you've been misbehaving like me, make these cookies for Santa so he can sort you out. Long story short, I've been misbehaving a little bit this year, but obviously got a pattern Santa with these cookies because I want a PS5. Sony or Santa, if you're watching this, send me a new one. My address... Is oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, this is how you make the cookies anyway. Santa will sort you out if you make these. Trust me. This recipe is going to make everyone fall in love with Brussels sprouts. And it needs to be on your Christmas dinner table. It's simple to make as well. I'm shredding the sprouts using a mandolin slicer which makes life so much easier. I bought the slicer from Amazon and I've added the link in my bio if you want to check it out. The green chilies in this recipe is completely optional and you should be able to buy this fried chicken mix from a local Asian superstore. Depending on the vegetables is how much water you need to add. Adding too much will make it soggy. You want this kind of consistency. You've also got to get the oil right here. Keep it on medium first and then put the flame up. Fry on both sides until the golden brown. This is a family recipe, so I'd love to see this on your Christmas dinner menu. Keep following for more delicious recipes. I'm starting off my Christmas recipe series with a gingerbread yes, thin take on one of my favourite brunch recipes, French toast. Let's start off by making the gingerbread honey sauce. The full measurements will be in the comments below. To a saucepan, add butter, cinnamon, honey, soy cream and the juice of one lemon. Melt all the ingredients together, whisking continuously and set aside to cool. For the French toast, to a large mixing bowl, add eggs, soya cream, oat milk, ground ginger and cinnamon. Whisk the ingredients together until combined and then soak slices of fresh bread in the mixture. Then, fry the bread in melted butter for a couple of minutes on each side until golden brown. Stack your French toast and pour over the gingerbread sauce. I top mine with some fresh blackberries, icing sugar and freeze-dried raspberries. Enjoy! With eyes on a glow what is up hoe? No, I'm joking, you're not a hoe, but what is going on? What's good? And today I'm going to be showing you a quick hack with frozen roast potatoes, seeing as it's coming up to Christmas. So you want to get some frozen roast potatoes. You want to microwave for about one to two minutes until they're nice and soft. And then use a fork to ruffle up all the edges and make it really uneven, just like that, guys. You see how I'm doing it? And then get a roasting pan and add some oil. Make sure you've got a layer of oil in there. Make sure you've got enough. Heat that oil up in the oven before adding in your ruffled up roast potatoes. Throw them in, let them cook, don't forget to roll them around halfway through, and boom! Saves you so much time, you don't have to boil potatoes or anything. Give it a try guys, Christmas is coming. Can we stop brandishing sprouts with farts? Because I actually really enjoy sprouts, and I look like a weirdo because I enjoy them. But I'm going to show you how to enjoy them. If you're using a tree, like I've got, then you need to just take out the outer layers of the sprouts. You've got the nice little bulb in the middle. Then chop them one in half. In a pan, you want to get some bacon, get it nice and caramelised with some onion. Once it's got some colour, add in your garlic and a bit of chicken stock, and then a bit of butter, you're making a nice glaze. In that time, you're boiling off your sprouts at the same time. In salted water, for about three to five minutes, depending on the size, because you still want a bit of bite in there. Toss your sprouts in, get them all glazed up in that lovely, rich, delicious baconiness. Great over a little bit of Comte and Bob's your uncle.
Here's how to make my giant pigs in blankets perfect for Christmas lunch. You're going to need some sausages, dried apricots, pistachios and some herbs like sage and parsley and also a little bit of lemon zest. Mix this together, now it's time for the bacon weave. You're going to need 12 rashers of smoked streaky bacon. Weed this together and this is going to be the perfect housing for our sausage meat. Use some cling film to bring up the sides of the bacon and wrap this tightly and chill until needed. Preheat your oven to 180 gas mark 4, now this is going to take around an hour to cook or until the sausage is cooked through. Now I know what you're waiting for, the all important cut through. So just check this out, this is going to be the star of the show on the dinner table this Christmas. Look at those colours, absolutely phenomenal, enjoy, Merry Christmas.